Rising legal twist on cannabis in California. In a recent decision, California's second district court of appeal issued a reminder that despite California's state level legalization of cannabis, federal laws say otherwise. The story starts back in November 2016 when California voters passed Proposition 64, also known as the Medicinal and Adult Use Cannabis Regulation and Safety Act. This act laid the groundwork for licensing, oversight, and enforcement of cannabis businesses with the California Department of Cannabis Control in charge. Fast forward to a new court decision that challenges what many believe. Is cannabis really legal in California? The court says, it is often said that cannabis is legal in California. The statement is not true. Under federal law, cannabis is illegal in every state and territory in the United States. The court cites the Controlled Substances Act and the, the Supremacy Clause of the U.S. Constitution, which holds federal law above state law. The case in question wasn't about criminal charges either. Oop, oop, did my computer work again? No, good. Um, it was about, yes, it did. Jason, good. All right, just keep on with the story here. This is I'm right. I had to get it back up on my thing. The particular, watch your mouth. The particular case titled J.C. Crandall LLC versus County of Santa Barbara wasn't about criminal charge for cannabis use or possession. Instead, it involved a landowner challenging Santa Barbara County's decision to grant a conditional use permit, or CUP, for cannabis cultivation on nearby land. The Court of Appeal ruled in favor of the landowner, stating that the permit was invalid because under federal law, cannabis is illegal in California and everywhere else in the United States. According to the court, that... The possession and cultivation of cannabis has the impetus of legality in California is beside the point. Essentially, the court asserted that California state laws cannot override federal law when it comes to cannabis legality. This ruling raises significant questions and challenges, with California having established a complex regulatory framework in issuing licenses to cannabis businesses. How does it reconcile with the federal classification of cannabis as a legal substance? Can the state continue to authorize and regulate an industry that remains illegal under federal law? Regardless of one's views on cannabis legalization, this decision underlines the ongoing tension between state-level legalization efforts and federal prohibition. For California's cannabis businesses and consumers, this court ruling may be a reminder that the legality of cannabis exists in kind of a legal limbo. Legal by state standards, yet still illegal on the books at a federal level. I think this is a really interesting story. I think it's a terrifying story because this guy obviously didn't want the farm down the street to be able to grow cannabis or whatever it was. So he challenged the legality of the CUP or the landowner did, excuse me. I'm guessing he had a tenant who was, who was intending to cultivate on his land. The fact that he won this case does a couple things. First of all, it should scare the shit out of all of us. Second of all, it establishes a precedence for case law. And I'd love to hear Dale's opinions on this, um, especially because this is a, this is a scary rolling guys. And the fact that this just happened right now, that's crazy. So I uh, will throw it over to, to you guys, but first of all, Dale and Jason, don't interrupt me when I'm having computer problems, you know, just don't have okay. computer problems. Well 2008, there was a, um, an appellate court decision that came out of San Diego, city of San Diego versus San Diego Normal. Um, and the cops in the city of San Diego challenged the um, identification system and the card under SB 420. And the appellate court ruled that unless um, the state requires you to violate federal law, then state law is not in conflict with federal law. Conflict. I is the, the key there. Mm -hmm. okay. This is saying that um, federal law is supreme, which in this court's opinion, uh, vitiates any of the state laws allowing people to do this because it's illegal. Now the Supreme Court's gonna have to take us up because there's a split on this now. The old ones, now what is um, quite old, 14, 16 years old, something like that, a long time ago, that the courts decided that we're not in conflict with federal law. Now they've taken sort of a stronger position. This will go to the appellate courts. But the overriding problem they have still is that the feds can't spend any money, so they're not actually enforcing, but they are correct. If the feds want to enforce, they could anytime they want. The problem is that the feds are not set up to enforce small-time um, businesses they just don't have the resources. They allowed the states to do it, and now the states won't, and the feds are told, you can't spend any money to enforce. So we've got not just this split in decision, but we've got this ridiculous situation we find ourselves in on this continuing resolution not to spend money, 
when in reality we need the federal government somehow the, the Supreme Court to fix this, the Congress to fix it, um, somehow to take away this conundrum we find ourselves in. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. So you think, man, I, that, man, I wonder if the yeah. prohibitionists put these guys up to, to take to take this case just so that they could get something to the Supreme Court because they believe that they, they, they would win on this merit. No, this was a landowner who was pissed off that his no, tenant no. intended to grow cake. Dale, because you just is a somebody's financing this. Someone's that's as, one, that's my we, point. That's my point. Yeah, All the as money. we've seen, there were cases brought specifically to challenge rates to get to the mm -hmm. Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. This may be a case to specifically challenge the Cal the San Diego normal yep. case from two thousand and eight. And we'll just see. I don't know of our Supreme Court. It's it's hard to know what they're going to do with this because right. under the Tenth Amendment, we should have the right to do what we want to do within the state, but the supremacy clause just hangs over like a, a sword of Damocles here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I smell, I smell, I smell prohibitionist money somewhere all over this case. But yeah, it's hundreds of thousands of dollars in mm -hmm. attorney's fees. I, yeah, I'm, I'm aware. Yeah, I just, I'm very aware how much that stuff costs. Very much aware. Um, man, 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 man. You have any thoughts on this, Rico? This is bad. Mm -hmm. It's bad. Yeah, this is it, bad news. It is bad, and and, and, and and it's just like Jenny Beth said. Like it is a very slippery slope, and uh, mm -hmm. we'll see. Oh, yeah, she, All right, well, nothing. I'm I'm gonna roll into my uh into in, into 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 my next story. Uh man, you know, I'm just, we just scared you all with the truth on Halloween, right there. <laughs> <laughs> 